Welcome everybody to Games Cast by Panda in a Row. If you wish to see more comedy games, please follow my YouTube and Twitch pages below. Alrighty, we have a ranked game here, folks, with Fiddlesticks in the Jungle, Mordekaiser in the mid, Tarek Corky down bottom, and a Jace up top. For the other team, we do see Diane in the middle, a Draven Janna bottom lane, Jax up top, and a Nocturne in the Jungle. This should be rather interesting as there are a lot of Ignites taken and not very many exhausts and there should be a lot of aggression coming out from both Fiddlesticks and Nocturne who synergize very well with their teams able to just jump on people and kill them rather quickly. Looks like the score is 1-0 to zero as we open up at the 4 minute and 45 second mark. These, there is a 500 gold lead for the blue team but nothing too serious at this point. Looks like Jax up top is putting some nice damage in on this Jace. And Draven is getting chunked down pretty hard by this Corky. Looks like Nocturne's coming in here for a gank. As Mordekaiser is pulled in by Diana, but he will get away just in time. Having to burn his flash. Jax is doing some major damage up top, but Jace knocks him away at the very last second. Only taking minimal damage from his stun, but this Jace is not going to have a good time. Jax is ridiculously far ahead, and he did decide to start with armor so he can trade better. I definitely like the idea of picking up that early cloth armor, especially on a lane like Jace where you can harass all day long, along with that crystalline vial. And that vial is just such a good item. It's hard to not get it on everyone. Looks like Odd One will be dying to the dragon, as he got a little greedy and didn't realize the dragon is a bit stronger since the last patch. And yeah, that's that's pretty embarrassing. I really wish I got the whole scene of that, but oh well, it's still very worth it. Right now we do see Corky and Draven duking it out down bottom. They are just going to keep farming it off. And so there is a nice ward from Janna down there in the bush, making sure she doesn't get caught up by Tarek because they could easily burst her down. She is fairly soft at this point in time. It looks like Nocturne might be heading up top for a gank, but I don't think he's going to do a whole lot. No, he decides to just back off and continue farming. Looks like Tarek is trying to get onto Draven, but I don't think they're going to be able to get onto Draven too easily. Janna has way too many skills to keep Tarek back from actually hitting him. Looks like Jax is doing some major damage to his Jace, and Jace just has no chance up here. Jax smarted way too, started way too smart. He's grabbed double Dorans and the armor. Looks like, no, they're not going to engage. They are going to throw some harassment down. Fiddlesticks is in the area. Should a fight break out, he can just run over here and attempt to help. Fiddlesticks has picked up the Sight Stone. Mordekaiser going for the Hextech Revolver or Haunting Guys. Looks like Diana is doing some heavy damage to him in the mid, but he does return a fair bit as he really does need that revolver to keep him alive in lane. He just deals too much damage to himself in addition to whatever damage the champion, the other champion is going to throw at him. Diana has gone for the early amplifying tome. Nocturne with just the machete and boots at this point along with that crystalline flask. Bottom laners have not gone back yet though Tarek did opt for the boot start while Jen opt for a more ward oriented start with the fairy charm. Looks like Janna is forced to back up as Tarek does have enough mana to just burn her really quickly. Looks like Jace is doing some good damage up top but Jax is doing a lot more as he does get that empowered strike off with the passive from his ultimate. Looks like Mordekaiser is getting bullied out of lane here in the middle. I just don't think more Mordekaiser has the damage to really compete with Diane at this point. Nocturne is coming up top, but he is only level 5. If he were level 6, this would be a very easy kill, as he could easily jump on to Jace at tower. And yeah, this Jace, I don't think he's going to be able to leave his tower. He's farming decent. It looks like Mordekaiser will get picked off here in the mid, as Diane just has way too much damage. And Mordekaiser is incredibly soft early game. Especially considering the fact he does not even have his revolver yet. At the 845 mark, looks like Jax is jumping into this tower. And they are going to either take the tower or dive it for Jace. Jace is just going to back up and throw out some long range harassment. 
a rather wise move, and that does save his tower as it took out several melee minions. Looks like Corky has picked up a Brutalizer and a Ruby Crystal. Draven going for that early BF Sword and Boots. Janna finishes off her Philosopher's Stone while Terracops for the Sight Ward and Rejuvenation Bead. Looks like Janna's trying to throw out some harassment on Corky and doing a decent job, along with grabbing herself a little bit of extra gold. Looks like the blue team will be going f for Dragon at this point, and hopefully Fiddlesticks will not die again, as that was rather embarrassing the first time. Diana has gone for a Negatron Cloak, and interesting enough, a Dagger. I'm not sure what she's going to build with that, unless she's going for a Malady build. But yeah, this should be an easily dead Dragon, as there are no wards that would see them doing this. And that is the first dragon of the game going to the blue team. The score is 1-1, one to one, but a little over 1,000 gold lead for the blue team. Fiddlesticks is down here, and level 6. Will he pop his ultimate is the big question. Looks like he's just going to run out there and fear Draven. That should easily be enough for a kill, but no, the Janet Tornado saves him. And Fiddlesticks looks to be stuck in an animation bug for a little bit. But oh well. That was a nice use of the Jan ultimate to really save Draven there. And she used it early enough that Draven didn't take too much damage and can still stay in lane. Looks like Nocturne is coming in the middle as Diana jumps onto Mordekaiser, the feared perfect angle for Nocturne, and they do pick up the kill. Looks like Draven is taken down bottom as Fiddlesticks comes back in for a gank. He did not pop his ultimate there. And he should be perfectly fine as he is taking the blue buff. Score is now 2-2 two to two with a 1,000 gold lead still after those two kills were exchanged. I do not think these bottom towers go going to go down. They just don't have the damage to do it at this point. But they're going to try. Or at least zone Janna off of it so she doesn't get any of the minion gold and experience. Draven should be back in a moment, and he does have his ultimate if he wants to use it to wave clear. Janna it does shield up some of the Fiddlesticks damage. But she can just break that Fiddlesticks fear rather easily with her Tornado. Looks like Jax is waiting up here to see if Jace comes in the bush. And he does, taking a lot of harassment. And dropping him down to half health before he even enters this lane. Jace has no chance in this lane unless he decides to pick up some early defenses. But he doesn't look like he's going that route. Jax has completed his Ninja Tabai and Double Doran's Blades. Meaning he is going to be an absolute monster in this lane. Nocturne has completed off the Riggles Lantern. Corky finishing off that Black Cleaver. That should do a good bit of damage here, as both him and Jace will benefit immensely from that. And it stacks incredibly well with the Taric Shatter. Let's see if Mordekaiser goes down. He looks like Jax is coming in, and this will be a dead Mordekaiser, assuming he does not have Flash Up. And he does not. But will he get the counter kill onto Jax? No, as Jax has just too little too much armor here. And he just backs away nice and safe. Looks like Fiddle Six is going to ultimate. And will he get the kill onto Nocturne? No, Nocturne shields the fear perfectly in time. And this should be a kill. No, they both decided to back up. I thought Fiddle Six was going to go a little deeper on that. It was a nice bait by Nocturne, but it just did not work out. I really like this Draven. Janet laying down bottom as Draven benefits so much from the additional attack damage of Janet's shield. Because every bit of attack damage is amplified by his whirling blades. And it means he can do a ton of damage. Looks like Morkaiser has completed a Hextech Revolver and is going for a Kendall Gym next. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. As he could definitely benefit from some early magic resistance. And the magic resistance from something like a Abyssal Scepter would do amazing. Let's see, anything else new? Not really at this point. Looks like Diana is going for the Malady build, an interesting choice. I have not seen Malady Diana, but it should be pretty good, as Diana naturally just has a very large amount of damage, and she is forced to auto attack rather often as her auto attacks are enhanced after several uses. 
Looks like Tarek is posturing up here, trying to get the stun out, but I don't think he's going to be in range. And he just gets off a nice heal on Corky. Looks like Mordekaiser is taking some big damage from Diana. And the shield from Diana means that she does not take any damage here. I definitely think that shield is going to be nerfed pretty soon, as it is just way too strong for a character with her level of damage. Her damage is perfectly fine, but as I said a moment ago, the shield is just way too strong. Looks like Diana is coming down bottom, but Fiddlesticks it has entered this bottom bush, and they are just going to back away. But I don't think this Janna is going to be so lucky as she does get taken down rather quickly. Exhaust is quickly thrown on Diana, and Diana will be forced to back up before anything happens. That Janna just getting a little too greedy. Diana does jump off to this Mordekaiser, and Mordekaiser is not fast enough to really get on her. But here is Nocturne coming in, and Nocturne will just kind of be here to safeguard Diana. That was just a reckless play by Janna. Janna should have known better. She had a ward down there in the bush and saw Fiddlesticks coming in but apparently didn't realize that Fiddlesticks and Tarot can CC for pretty much ever. Looks like Draven's taking a lot of damage and will be towered over here. He does throw out the slow, but is not on Fiddlesticks, as Fiddles as Corky does kind of back up and wisely soak tower damage, allowing Tarot and Fiddlesticks to get the kill with relative ease. Both of them are fairly low. Looks like Jace is still getting bullied out of this top lane as Jax is getting basically free farm. Though Jace is keeping up with him in farm, he just doesn't feel as safe doing so as he always feels extremely low. Nocturne up top should be going for a gank on this Jace as soon as minions get in tower range. His ultimate is up and the second Jax pops his counter strike, Nocturne will jump. And that is one dead Jace. Nothing they can do about it. As Jace just stayed a little too long, not realizing where Nocturne was. Looks like Morganizer finally decided to grab some magic resistance, and the first tower of the game does go to the red team, with Jax picking it up. The red team is up by 300 gold, as the score is tied 4 to 4, and is relatively even. Blue team being picked up the first dragon, and looks like Fiddlesticks is going for another dragon, or at least to kill that ward, but he will pay for it with his life as Diana jumps in here and makes quick work of Fiddlesticks. That is not a very safe move, especially not knowing where the mid laner is. And having someone like Janna there who has several interrupts for Fiddlesticks Drain with both the ultimate and Tornado knocking him out of his drain. Looks like Corky's trying to get in here, but Janna knocks him back right into Draven, and that is a quick kill on Corky. Though Draven will pay for it with his own life. Tarek doing an absolute ridiculous amount of damage. And that armor shred is pretty crazy. Once it's all stacked up, Jax is taken down here in the middle lane, and he will get this kill on Mordekaiser. Yes, he will get this kill on Mordekaiser rather easily, making that a nice three-man dive, and they will continue this push, or at least Jax will. Janna is coming up to try and ward this middle lane, but there is a pink ward. I do not think that pink ward is in range to see it, but we shall see in a moment. Right now, Diana is leading the charge in terms of CS, sitting at 147, and wow, that pink ward did see it, just barely. Nice pink ward location there, looks like Janna is not going to go and fight that, but Fiddlesticks will go in and solo the dragon. His drain is incredibly good for soloing it, especially considering he has enough mana and does a ton of damage with the increased minion damage ability from the, what is that? You go the golem route? Yeah, Spectral Wrath. And let me see how much armor they are reducing for this, because that is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Corky reduces an absolute ton of damage, plus Taric Shatter. No wonder Draven died in that last fight. That is pretty crazy. Looks like Jax is just going to back up. Jax should be able to finish his Trinity Force fairly soon. And he will be in position to absolutely annihilate everyone on the blue team as soon as he finishes that off. He's basically been given free farm up top and grabs two kills along with it. Looks like Mordekaiser going for the new and improved Spirit Visage. I'm not sure how much that's going to help him as he really needs more ability power at this point. 
I would have thought a casual Negatron Cloak would have been good enough, but apparently he wants to heal himself. The score is 5-7 to seven here with a 2 tower advantage for the red team and a 1,000 gold lead. Looks like Diana is jumping here on Corky, but Corky will have something to say about it as Diana does flash and get the kill. Nice use of the refresh on her ultimate as it allows her to jump very quickly and stay away from the team that was chasing her down. Looks like the blue team has grouped up here to push, but Draven and Jan will take the bottom tower while the top middle one is taken by the blue team. Will they continue to push is the question, and I think if they do continue to push, it might be worth it. Though I'm not sure how much they can push against this Jax, as Jax absolutely wrecks any tower he gets near and is continuing to basically free farm. So towers were exchanged one to one there as Jace does return to his bottom lane. Looks like Jace will be... No, they decide not to dive and they're just going to go check for the blue buff and wait for the rotation of someone. But no, there is not going to be a rotation as they both backed up wisely and understood that someone is likely in their jungle. We do see more guys are trying to steal race here. And it's f still fairly difficult as he has to burn all of his abilities several times to actually kill them off. But he does not take damage for it. Looks like Fiddlesticks has picked up Magic Penetration Boots and the Kage's Lucky Pick. Ruby Sightstone up on Tarek along with the makings of an Aegis of the Legion. Double Black Cleaver up on Jace and Corky. I'm not sure that's such a great idea as they do not stack, though it will allow them to stack up the Black Cleaver quickly. Corky does stack up the Black Cleaver incredibly quickly with every hit from his Gatling gun, proccing the Black Cleaver. Looks like Corky will be going for the Blade of the Rune King. Fiddlesticks does find Janna here out in the open, and that is one dead Janna, unless she has multiple CDs. But it looks like Jax is here just in time to save her. And Draven will get some fair damage. But here's the altar by Fiddlesticks, and he is dead before the fight even begins. And this is not looking good for the blue team, as they just have no answer to this Diana, sitting at 5-0-5. And, and her damage is pretty ridiculous at this point. And that will mean a Baron for the red team, as that is a complete ace for none. In what should have been an easy death on Janna. They just don't have the damage at this point in time to really fight that out. I'm not sure this choice of the Spectral Wrath was good on Fiddlesticks, as he does not have any survivability. Let's see his health at the moment. Yeah, little over 1,000 health, and he goes down so incredibly fast. He definitely needs to go with a more tanky build to actually survive once he ultimates, because we saw in that last fight, he was dead before it even started. He ultimate in and immediately got killed. Diana has finished up her Abyssal Scepter along with the Malady and likely going for Zanya's Hourglass next. Trinity Force up on Jax, Draven with the Bloodthirster and Brutalizer. Looks like the Sightstone and Double GP10's out from Janna. And Janna also opting for the Ninja Tabai, an interesting choice, but I guess she doesn't really fear the magic damage. As she is pretty tanky at this point, considering she does have... Yeah, almost 1,600 health. Mordekaiser are likely going for the... Uh, looks like Riley's Crystal Scepter with a pick up of the Giant's Belt. That could also be just a casual Giant's Belt, so he actually survives in fights long enough to get his ultimate off. But I really don't think he's going to survive very long, as the absolutely ridiculous amount of damage from Jax and Diana should finish off any team before this fight even starts and yeah this just comes down to the fact that Diana was not stopped in lane, Mordekaiser didn't shut her down and Jax basically got to free farm up top the blue team's bottom lane won fairly nicely down bottom but they just couldn't keep up in these team fights as Jax and Diana are absolute monsters, and they can just jump and kill whoever they want at this point in time, as no one from the blue team has very much in terms of armor or survivability. It looks like 
Blade of the Rune King is up on Corky. And a few armor items have been picked up by the red team. Not a whole lot else. Looks like Janet is going for that Shirley's Reverie, and the blue team is just going to sit here and group as five. I'm not sure grouping as five is the best option, but I think it's their only option at this point, as they could find a pick off as five and actually get one or two kills and snowball it. But without the oracles at this point, they really can't keep good vision up in the jungle. The red team will likely back off, clear both sides of the jungle, and take Dragon. Or it could be Diana just running in here into five people and getting a kill without taking very much damage. Looks like Fiddlesticks does pop his ultimate and gets a kill onto Nocturne, but that was only Nocturne's Guardian Angel. And it looks like that is an almost ace, but everyone from the red team is alive. Nothing much happened in that fight other than the red team is just clearly superior in every single way. They are up 7,000 gold after that. And Corky just got slightly caught as the surrender vote does come out at the 25 minute mark. And yeah, that just came down to no one keeping Diana in check or Jax in check as both of them have a ridiculous sum of kills and ridiculous farm. Jace just is not a very good counter laner at this point. Look at that. 505 on Jax. 608 on Diana. And even 415 on Nocturne. Is all of them just did ridiculously well that game. And no one on the blue team really got going. Mordekaiser got an early first blood. But other than that, he just did not do a whole lot. He can't stop Diana as Diana can pop her shield and prevent pretty much all of that harass rather easily. Thank you for watching Games Cast by Panda Narill. If you wish to see more, follow my YouTube and Twitch pages below.